I've shared a lot about conscious capitalism and why it's a perfect fit for family business, how it appeals to the higher purpose that drives so many family businesses, how a family business uses a caretaking approach with their stakeholders, and how the next generation is ideal to become conscious leaders. That all sounds really good, but that shouldn't mean conscious capitalism isn't without its challenges. When it comes to building and reinforcing a conscious culture, there are some things family businesses will find difficult to take on. Before I dive into those challenges, let me define what a conscious culture is. Conscious capitalism uses the, tac the acronym TACTILE to list the seven characteristics that make up this approach to culture. These characteristics are trust, accountability, caring, transparency, integrity, loyalty, and egalitarianism. It's a fitting acronym. For conscious capitalism, a conscious culture is so strong that you can literally feel the culture when doing business with a company. It sounds great, doesn't it? Who wouldn't want to be part of a business with this kind of culture? But a conscious culture can be difficult for a family business to adopt. Families tend to be insular. They turn inward as a way to protect themselves and each other so the family can thrive. That filters into how the company is managed and consequently the culture it creates. With this tendency to turn inward, you can see how families and business together will struggle with other parts of the tactile acronym. For example, trust can be difficult to keep in a family business. That's a hard thing to hear. It's also a hard thing to say. What do you mean you can't trust your family members? Well, if there's pain in the relationship where loved ones have hurt each other, on purpose or not, and most likely not, maintaining trust with them and others can be a tall order. If you've been hurt bef before by someone you love and that happens in any family, chances are you'll be reluctant to trust them again. When that happens enough times, the relationship deteriorates to the point where they constantly argue or they avoid each other. Employees and everyone else are then left navigating this broken relationship, usually by picking sides. Then rather working together, everyone is working against each other, defending whichever side they choose. Accountability is another. Family members may be hesitant to hold each other accountable in the business because that signals a significant shift in their relationship. How willing is the founding parent, the one who holds the purse strings, open to listening to their youngest child question their judgment or criticize them for not following procedure? On the other hand, how willing is the youngest child, the baby if you will, open to confronting their parent who also signs their paycheck? It's a change in the dynamic from protecting one another to holding one another responsible for their commitments. Transparency is also difficult because that means being more open with information and decision making. Entrepreneurs, founders of businesses, can be control freaks. They started the business because they had a singular vision that they could solve a problem or offer a product or service better than anyone else. Letting go and being open can be unsettling for them. Of course, that takes trust and accountability. Trust that others will follow through and get things done, and accountability to hold one another responsible when they don't. So what's a family business to do? First, don't fool yourselves. Recognize that a shift to a conscious culture will be hard, but also recognize that it's better for the business and ultimately the family. Psychological safety, an essential ingredient in trust, is the key predictor of a work team's effectiveness. The safer everyone feels, the more willing they are to take risks and be open with, with one another. Next, repair a relationship. You might have a family member where things are not the best between you. Acknowledge there's hurt without blame or pointing fingers. Accept that you played a role too and ask how, together, both of you can make things better. Finally, start small by starting with the family because it's the foundation of the business. Work to build trust with loved ones. Get comfortable with holding one another accountable constructively. And build transparency by sharing information and decision-making responsibility. As those habits are built over time, then explore how you can create a conscious culture together. Until next time, I wish you, your family, and your business the very best. Take care.